What's up guys, Mitchell Watts with Town & Country TV and today is a video I never thought I would make and that is putting up the new Ram TRX up against uh, something that TC Customs has built. And so in this video, I um, am going to do my best to be fair and honest between both of these vehicles. I will tell you though, uh, that I am biased. If you're brand new to our channel, um, we are a custom shop, TC Customs. Uh, we do superchargers, lift kits, wheels, tires, all kind of custom work for all makes and all models. But our parent company, which is Town & Country Ford, is obviously a Ford dealership. So I'm gonna point out some legitimate things that I love about the Ram TRX, and I'm gonna tell you some things I hate about it. I'm going to point out some things that I absolutely love about this TC Customs F-150 and I'm going to tell you some things that I hate about it. I'm going to try and stay away from uh, as much just opinion and just hating on either one of them but just more or less relying on facts and things like that. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump in. First up, let's talk about what everybody is always talking about, and that is the powertrain inside of this particular Ram TRX. Now, this is obviously a 6.2 liter supercharged V8 motor. Um, that is really what the Ram TRX is known for, is just really the motor. Um, so let's just do this. Let's go ahead and pop the hood and see what we've got going on here. Got this massive engine plenum. You've got a Ram air intake, which is kind of nice. I will have to say that. Um, but it, a lot of it is covered up. I mean, I personally believe that if you're going to spend this kind of money for a, uh, a big, nasty supercharged V8, let's see the V8. I, I, I don't like a whole lot of engine plenums. I mean, if you can kind of sneak back in here behind it, that is a really cool looking supercharger. I don't understand why they would want to hide that. I'm sure there's got to be a reason for something, but anyways, that's that's something that you need to realize. Oh, and hey, it just pops off just that easy? No way it pops off that easy. Okay, so it does pop off that easy. And now I know why they have this engine plenum because you've got your air box inside underneath it. So, okay, well that makes a little bit more sense. Oh my gosh, what is this? Oh man, Ram is over here trying to hate on some people, ain't they? <laughs> so we're gonna cover that back up. Now guys, I, like I said, I will tell you that this is not a bad little vehicle. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna share some things with you here in just a second, but obviously you've got a ton of power as you can see right there on the screen. That is really what this thing is known for. But a couple of things that I do like as far as the exterior, I do like the Ram Air intake. You've also got your functional heat extractors located on both sides. I will tell you though, something that I think that they could have done a little bit differently is going to be the direct front end. So this area right here, in my personal opinion, I think they could have done a little bit more to make it unique. Um, and the way that I'm, I'm judging this is if you have somebody that's not a car guy or not a truck guy like almost every one of you guys are, and you see one of these driving down the road, will you know that it is a Ram TRX with crazy horsepower? I mean, you're paying cool money. Can you tell that this is a cool vehicle while you're driving down the road? Now it does have some wider hips, as you can see. You've got, I say this is this is not a hip, but you've got wider front fenders and you've also got the hips in the rear, uh, which kind of covers the larger tires. Um, so I do like that look of it, but I don't feel like there's enough going on on the front end to make you say, holy moly, that is a very unique, very different style for for a you know for a ninety thousand dollar vehicle. So let's keep walking around and kind of kind of show you some other things. I do like you got your uh, your fender vent uh, heat extractors. Those look like they were functional as well. Uh, so you've got that set up here. As far as the wheels and tires are concerned, you do have a set of Goodyear Wrangler tires. Now these are going to be the 325-65R18. And as you can see that it looks like it is a beadlock capable wheel. Now I want to kind of show you the suspension itself. This is the Bilstein uh, Active Terrain uh, uh, suspension system. I do believe that they've obviously got the reservoir up there, but it is also interesting to note this is a coil sprung rear end, which is, which is cool. Uh, you know, the 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 new um, the new Raptor is moving to a, um, a a coil sprung rear end, but I just don't know how good that is for necessarily towing. Now, if you're going for you know suspension travel, that's probably the right way to go. But just like the Raptor can't tow everything that the normal F-150 can. You just need to realize that a coil spring sprung suspension, it feels a little wonky when you've got a heavy, heavy trailer behind you. So before we move on to the inside and comparing the insides, let's take a look at the outside of this uh, 2020 Ford F-150 TC Customs. Now, obviously this is, 
going to be a vehicle. If you guys are one of the OGs on the channel, this truck might look familiar. And the reason that it does is because this is one, and I can't remember the title of the video, but we'll put it right there on the screen. Uh, but this was one that we actually built for a specific customer in Tennessee. Um, and he has since traded it back in to us. And, uh, and so what I wanna show you is underneath the hood of this one. Now this is gonna be the 5.0 V8 that is a uh, very similar powertrain. It doesn't have as much horsepower as the Ram TRX does, but because it's got the 5.0, it does have the Roush supercharger. It's a Roush and a Ford Performance supercharger. It's good for 650 horsepower, and uh, it comes with you know a normal warranty of three or 36,000 miles to the original owner. Now, what's interesting to note about the Roush and Ford Performance uh, warranty is if you're not the original owner, you technically don't have that warranty anymore. So it's interesting to note this one doesn't have an engine warranty on it right now because it is the second hand for that supercharger. Um, so yeah, that's that's kind of interesting. Now I'll show you, because this thing started out as a Platinum, I'll show you some of the things we did to customize it that I think makes it look a little bit better. Um, you can see you do have a non-functional hood scoop. So this is not hood functional at all. It's purely for looks, but as you can see that it does look, and I think it looks a lot meaner. One of my favorite things though, is we took out the normal Platinum grill and swapped it out to this particular grill, which is an XT, uh, excuse me, an STX Ford F-150 front grill. We sanded it, painted it a gate black to match everything else. Then the customer, after he had everything done, he had this entire front clip all the way back to here paint protection film. So that way you don't have to worry about rock chips. You don't have to worry about the custom paint be chipped off if you're driving down the road a little bit too aggressively, uh, that kind of a thing. Now the suspension on this vehicle is gonna be a little bit different than what you have over here. Over at the Ram, you've got the Bilstein shocks. This has a four inch BDS coilover suspension lift, uh, which features Fox coilovers. Now I would argue that they are both very similar as far as overall performance uh, for the suspension system. The Ram might be a little bit better on the high speed off-roading just simply because the coil spring versus a leaf sprung in the rear. But anyway, you do still have the Fox shocks in the rear as well. Whereas over there in the rear, you, you had a, um, a reservoir, but you don't have a reservoir in the back, just in the front on this particular setup. So I wanna show you a couple of other things on the back side of this truck. Uh, this one, once again, is a platinum. We try to get as ri rid of as much chrome as we possibly could. We painted the applique black, uh, which I think makes a perfect amount of contrast on the vehicle. Um, and also you can see we custom did the emblems there as well. Without further ado, let's go ahead and take a listen to both of these exhaust systems. By the way, this one does feature a Magnaflow black tip exhaust system. Um, we do have a lot of those available on sale at tccustoms.com if you wanna take a look at that. But I want you to guys make the decision which one you actually think sounds better. All right, so a couple of comments about the exhaust system. As I was revving them up, I do like that the sound of the Roush supercharger was a little bit louder just when you're sitting there revving it up. Uh, both of them are pretty loud when you step on it when you're under load, but it is interesting to note. So I, I wanna know, what do you guys think as far as the exhaust system? Leave some comments down below and let me know which one you think actually is the best. So let's take a look at the inside and compare those two between these two trucks. All right, so on the inside of this particular F-150, you're gonna notice a couple of different things. This has got the upgraded interior. I say upgraded, it's got the different color. So on a normal Platinum F-150, you have the ability to go with a black or a Brunello. Um, sometimes from year over year, they might change it to a, a Carmelo. Um, there, there's a quite a few, but basically it's got the brown and black interiors, what this one has. Now, one thing that I love about this F-150, and before I go into that, um, I do want to let you know and remind you, this is a 2020 model. If you look at and compare a 2021, that's the new body style, and there's a drastic upgrade in difference um, in the 21 
F-150 in this one. So um, really, it's more of a fair fight against the TRX to be comparing a 21 to a 21. But this is what we have as far as a, a, a nice loaded out and supercharged F-150 to kind of give you for comparison's sake. But with that being said, the thing that I love about the Platinum F-150 the most is going to be the uh, active contour seats. Let me rephrase that. This thing has massaging seats. It massages your butt and your back to prolong long driving. So if you struggle with blood flow in your legs, you can turn on those massaging seats and it will make it seem uh, like your legs are not gonna go numb nearly as fast. So I do love that specific setup. Now, the other thing that, uh, th there's really not a whole lot to go over because, I, I, spoiler alert, the Ram interior is really, really nice. Um, I will tell you though, the Sync 3 system, although this thing is a tiny screen, and comparing this one to that one, I will tell you the Ram is light years ahead. Um, when you compare the 21 to 21, uh, it's a much more fair fight, but I like the stability of the Sync 3 system. I've got, uh, or I had it, because uh, I've sold my Raptor, but I had that Sync 3 system in my Raptor and never once had an issue out of that Sync 3 system. One thing that I absolutely love about the interior of this particular F-150 is going to be the twin panel moonroof. So as you can probably tell, it's got this massive shade that when it's closed, you would barely know that there is even a twin panel moonroof there and as you can see it's got a nice convenient spot where it stops there if you don't want your back passengers to get sunny but if you want to open it all the way you have that ability to do so right there and the other benefit is this panel will actually come up and back to give you an open air look almost like you're kind of driving like a convertible because this panel is so massive and uh, with that being said let's take a look at the rear seat of the f-150 for the back seat of the vehicle, I will tell you though, um, they're going to be very comparable between the two, but I will tell you that I think the F-150 has just a little bit more space back here. So if you are constantly that person that lifts the seats up, uh, so that way you have a, a big area to put a lot of cargo back here, the F-150 wins by just a little bit. Now I will tell you though, the other thing that I want to showcase to you is this setup right here. These are going to be a set of airbags for your seat belt. So let's say that you have a younger person uh, that is gonna be riding in the back seat of the vehicle. The reason these buckles are so massive is this right here is actually a canister of air that heaven forbid you're in an accident, what happens is that canister will shoot air into the seat belt and expand the seat belt to cover over four times the area. The goal there is most kids, when they're wearing a seatbelt in an accident, most of the injuries come from the seatbelt, a small little area that kind of sometimes can break their collarbone. Well, Ford thought of that and they made up this airbag, which it does not open up nearly as hard as the front airbags do, but the design is right before impact, it just gently expands to cover over four times more over their chest. Instead of having a small strap come in and try and break their collarbone, it's, got, it's dispersing that energy over more parts of their body, hopefully keeping them safe from actually getting hurt by the seat belt itself. So I think that is a pretty cool setup that I don't think that the Ram has. Uh, the other thing I wanna to show to you is is a couple of things. You have two USB-C, or excuse me, two USB-A ports located right here. You've got heated seats for the rear and a normal household outlet plug, as well as a household outlet plug up front as well. So now that we've gone, gone through the F-150, let's take a look at the TRX. All right, on the inside of the TRX, let's talk about a, well, a couple of the things that's going on. I do like the way the seats look. I do like a little bit more of a bolstering. Wait a second. Y'all hear that? Look. Y'all hear that in the engine? It sounds like a squeaky noise. <laughs> For those Christmas vacation fans, you'll know what I'm talking about. Anyways, I, I wasn't exactly expecting to hear that squeaking noise. I'm not picking on the Ram, I just, I don't know if that's normal or if there's an issue with this specific one. By the way, this uh, Ram TRX is not for sale. This is actually a good friend of my business partner. Uh, he's bought a bunch of Raptors from us and he actually traded his last Raptor in for this particular Ram TRX. Holy moly. Okay, so that's one thing I don't necessarily like on this truck. I touched it and I was like, okay, so guys, it is 93 degrees outside based on what it says there. I don't believe that. I believe it's actually a little bit hotter than that. And this metal piece is, whoo, yeah. Okay, so the idea there is if you're sitting there and you just rest your arm on the armrest, it will just about burn your forearm. So that is one downside that I think that they should have moved this thing maybe to the back or maybe moved it to the dash, somewhere that you're not gonna be constantly resting your hand on uh, and then 
possibly burning you. But it is nice that you have that. Uh, you do have the VIN number located on here, 702 horsepower. Um, you've even got uh, how much boost is on there. So it's a cool look to it. It's just bad placement in my professional opinion. Uh, as far as the interior is concerned, I don't really have any issues with it. You've got you know, a dual setup for the uh, center console. I actually do like that setup. Uh, we reviewed a RAM back in the past and I didn't really like the way that center console worked, but this is actually working okay for me. Uh, you do have USB-C and USB-A uh, located here and here. You also have a normal auxiliary input. That's something that the Ford doesn't have. Uh, and you, you can see you've got all of your auxiliary switches, you've got your uh, traction control, your parking aids, all that kind of stuff is located right there. Um, okay, so let's talk about this. This screen is light years ahead of what is in that 2020 Ford F-150. But I will also tell you though that um, it's kind of difficult to pick it up and run with it, if that makes sense. The learning curve is a, is a smidge higher on here. I'm sure that once you've had the vehicle for a couple weeks, it's probably never going to come up again. Just realize if you're not technologically advanced or don't like technology, you might not like the learning curve that is associated with this system versus the Ford F-150, and that also goes for the 21 model. Uh, but I do like you have your clear dedicated knobs here for your tune and also your volume. Uh, series over here listening to me, kind of creeping me out a little bit. Um, you also have located over here, you have four wheel drive auto, four wheel drive high, four wheel drive low, and axle lock. So it's interesting to note, you cannot even put this thing in a two wheel drive as far as I know. And this is probably one of my favorite buttons on the planet <laughs> in every vehicle. Lounge control is my friend. Uh, but yeah, I, I really do like the interior. Um, and it's weird saying that from you know being such a Ford guy, but I do like the interior. Let's take a look at this. Let's open up the twin panel moonroof and see the similarities and differences between this and the Ford F-150. Holy smokes. Okay, so it looks identical as far as the size is concerned. Um, so I do like that feature as well. Um, I like the steering wheel. I don't really have very many issues except for the learning curve of the, the, the infotainment system. Um, my biggest issues with this would be the exterior styling. I feel like you're paying for really fancy styling. You're paying for the cool, but it doesn't look as cool as it probably should. Hold that thought. We're going to talk about that in just a second. Before we do that, I want to take a look at the back seat and compare those. All right, so now that we're in the back, I've not adjusted the seats on the front seats on either one of them to just kind of show you uh, where people have normally been sitting in this thing, but you can kind of see how much space you've got in this car. Um, okay, so one thing, I'm six foot three, and I don't know if you saw that, but there's no running boards on this truck. I don't know if that's just an option that he removed or whatever, uh, but you've got plenty of knee room, leg room. I wouldn't have any issues sitting back here. Um, I feel like it's very comparable to the Ford F-150. Um, but I, I will tell you though, that I feel like when the seats are up on both sides, it does feel like this room right here is more so in the F-150. So if you're putting big, big stuff in that back seat, as I've already mentioned to you, this is probably not the way that I would go, but most people aren't buying a TRX for the cargo space. Okay, before we move on, there's a couple of things I noted right after that we had left the back, um, and that is going to be uh, ventilated seats in the rear. That is pretty freaking epic, and no Ford has that, as to my knowledge. Lincoln might have it, but none of the Ford F-150s do. You also have your Harman Kardon extra speakers located in the back here as well. So um, I am assuming that the audio system is also going to be better as well. So it looks and you know, just as trying to be as honest and fair as I possibly can, knowing that I'm biased, it seems like the Ram has got us in a lot of categories except for one. <laughs> and that is going to be the price. Now this vehicle is currently for sale and it's for sale I think roughly around 81,000. This vehicle is not for sale so what I did is I went ahead and pulled the comps. So being at a dealership we have the ability to see market data. We can see what vehicles are selling for, what they're listed for, what the trade values are supposed to be and everything like that. What we did is we took a look at every single Ram TRX that is on the market for sale used right now and that average price is $98,000, which by the way is a good bit more than the sticker price of the vehicle as well. So these things are demanding a premium even on the used car market. So roughly, you're talking about a $17,000 difference between these two vehicles. And that is the question that I wanna to pose to you guys. Is this vehicle worth $17,000 more dollars on average than this one is? I would argue though that, that although this is 
more horsepower. It's um, cool looking. I think this is actually a little bit cooler looking on the outside. This one on the interior crushes the old body style F-150. Doesn't crush the new one. It's much more comparable. Um, I don't think that this one is $17,000 more than this vehicle, but I want to know what you guys think. So leave those comments down below. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Um, if you think that I'm just off my rocker completely, light me up in the comments there too. I don't care. I, I, I promise you I don't. I just want to know what your independent opinion is. I know that I'm biased and I'm willing to admit that this truck is a better truck than this one, but I don't think it's $17,000 better. That's my opinion. I'd like to know what yours is. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you haven't already done so, make sure you smash that thumbs up button. Smack it hard if that's something you're into. <laughs> and make sure you are subscribed to that YouTube channel with the bell notification turned on so you don't miss a single video. Peace.